So recently I've started playing Elden Ring and that game, just like every other From Software game, is a roller coaster of emotions. And I would argue that games like these have the largest roller coaster of emotions than probably any other game that exists. The high you feel after defeating an incredibly hard boss is something that I don't know if I have felt in any other video game. But likewise, the low that you feel when you continually die to the same boss over and over again is also something that I don't know another video game has ever made me feel. I don't know that another game has ever made me feel as garbage or trash at anything than From Software has made me feel. And if you've played Elden Ring, a From Software game, Shadow of the Colossus, Final Fantasy, or any other game that has these massive boss battles, then I'm sure you've probably felt the same way. You felt that roller coaster of emotion where you feel like you're on top of the world only to meet the next boss and then feel like you want to throw your controller against a wall. So in today's video, we are going to highlight the eight stages that every gamer goes through whenever you have to take on a tough boss battle. Now, right now, your call to action is I want you to let me know down in the comments, what is the hardest boss battle you've ever had to fight? And I know if you're watching this, you've had to do a boss battle. So what I want to see is views, number of views equal number of comments. Everyone let me know and let everyone else know what is that one tough boss that stands out in your mind? And I mean, while you're down there, you might as well hit the like button and the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notifications for new videos like this. Also, if you want to hang out with me live, go check out my channel on Twitch. We're going to be doing some live streaming over there, and I will put the link to the Twitch channel down in the description below. I'm going to attempt to work on some sort of rough streaming schedule, so stay tuned for that. All right, without further ado, let's talk about the eight stages that we go through when taking on tough boss battles. So stage one of the boss battle is going to be that test run. You're going to hop in and it's about testing the waters, kind of feeling the boss out. This is where you're going to determine for one, is this a true eight stage boss? I'm sure that you know that not every boss is an eight stager. Some bosses like the stone digger troll are just a one stage boss where you try and you might win on the first try. But also don't be out there telling me that you beat Father Gascoigne or Godric the Grafter on your first try. Those are eight stage bosses. Don't feel the need to act superior to everyone else. But in the test run, it's all about watching your opponent, learning from them. You are doing very, very little on the offensive. You're doing a lot of rolling, dodging, just learning their timings of their moves and just seeing what they're capable of. Does this guy have ranged attacks? Does he have a weak side? Like if I get on one side of him, can he not hit me? If I stand a certain distance away, will that proc certain attacks from him that I can take advantage of? This was something I learned pretty quickly whenever I fought the Tree Sentinel was that whenever he charges you, you can actually roll with him and he'll carry you with him and then you can land a couple of cheesy hits on him. This is what the test run is all about. It's about feeling your enemy and learning them, but not ever attempting to win. And whenever you die at the end of this stage, you aren't upset because you have started the learning process. You weren't intending to win and you didn't win and you're okay with that because like we said, this was just the test run. All right, so after stage one has happened, we get into stage two, which is where we really try to learn the moves. Now this is a little different from stage one. In stage one, we've learned, okay, he has this move. All right, he has ranged attacks. Okay, the ranged attacks usually follow this attack. But now in stage two, we have to work on the timing. How do we adapt to these moves that we have seen? This is usually where we learn, oh, so he's gonna do a big attack. And that's usually followed by, oh crap, I rolled at the wrong time. Stage two is where you really study and really become familiar with the inner workings of the boss's moveset. Stage two will also be accompanied by dying lots of times. Once again, if you beat a boss while you're in stage two, then you have learned that this wasn't actually an eight stage boss all along. This was just a measly two or three stage boss. But for an eight stage boss, I would say expect to spend a couple of hours here where you're just kind of feeling out how are you going to time this guy's moves. This is where you're also going to start learning on when you can land hits on the enemy. There are some moves that we know from bosses that we learn in stage two that we can't attack after because he does just another flurry of attacks immediately after. All of this happens in stage two and then unfortunately, we move into stage three. So you finish stage two. You have learned the boss's initial moveset. You've learned the timings. You can actually get him down to a third, maybe even half of his health. Depending on the boss, sometimes you might even reduce their health all the way to zero. But then that cheeky boss, they decide to hit you with the well, but this isn't even my final form. Yeah, that's right. Stage three is that form change that we are familiar with that bosses undergo. Typically in Soulsborne games, this is some sort of physical transformation, something 
physical changes about the boss. But that need not be the case. Some enemies like the Tree Sentinel just get a new moveset once you get them below a certain health percentage. Some bosses you reduce their health all the way down to zero and then they reward you by getting a form change and their health bar just goes all the way back to 100. So congratulations, you got out of stage two. Welcome to stage three, which is probably going to send you right back to stage two because now with the form change is going to come a grand set of new moves you have to learn. If you're battling Magret the Fell Omen, now guess what? You get to battle with a huge hammer. If you're going up against the Tree Sentinel, there's no big massive transformation. It's just new moves that he just decides to throw at you that you didn't see coming. And if you're fighting someone like Godric the Grafter, then uh, for stage three, you get to watch this very troubling cutscene. I mean, yeah, that actually troubled me to my core. And then you get to learn all about his new fire moves and all these new attacks that this boss is capable of. And now go back to step two, relearn those. And then hopefully you're gonna skip to step three and go to step four. All right, so you have finished stage three. You have gotten through all of the different phases that this boss has to offer you. You have witnessed the transformation. You have witnessed them ripping a dragon's head off and adding it to their arsenal. You have witnessed every move they have to offer. You have the timing down. You are doing damage to this enemy and you finally have this boss down to within an inch of their life. The music intensifies. You can feel your pulse racing. Your blood pressure is increasing. You can feel the adrenaline pumping through your body. But what's this? Wait, I hit the wrong button. No, wait a minute, my timing's just a little off. Yes, that's right. Stage four is at the very end of the boss fight. You have him so low and then you start to suck. You choke at the end of the fight. Your timing just couldn't be worse. You have him down to that little sliver of health. You're spamming the attack button. One of these has to connect and we'll finish him off. And then it happens and you die. This is the low point and this is a pivotal moment in the eight stages of boss battles where now you start to go on a downhill trajectory. That battle was the best one you've had so far. And unfortunately, it's going to be the best one that you've had so far for a little while because you will begin to notice that after that fight, each subsequent fight, you're going to make more and more mistakes. They may even be at the very beginning of the fight. You may start getting hit by attacks that you haven't been hit by in like 30 attempts. You are constantly getting worse and worse. You're not learning from your mistakes and you are just starting to get incredibly frustrated with the game. It's hard to tell how long stage four lasts because it is usually interrupted by stage five. No! Yeah, that's right. Stage five, we're all familiar with it. That is going to be the rage quit. We've all been there and it's not even necessarily particular just to boss battles. We've all had the rage quit occur sometime in a video game and it's not fun. It's not a feeling that any of us enjoy. The biggest advice I have for you when you're in stage five is to try to limit the amount of collateral damage that you cause. Whenever you're in that rage quit moment, please don't throw your dual shock. Please don't damage your beautiful 4K monitor. For the love of God, if you still have one of these, don't rip out the game disc and break it in half. We've all been tempted to do it. I've definitely thrown my dual shock because of a few boss fights before. Granted, I threw them like into a pillow or onto the bed so that they don't, you know, get destroyed. That being said, I have in my life actually destroyed one dual shock when I was a child from a rage quit. Now, what is very crucial about this stage is that you don't allow the rage quit to turn into a rage breakup. You must not allow the rage quit to evolve into where you just put down the game and don't come back to it for a few weeks. Or even worse, 
ever again. Because if your rage quit gets serious enough to where you have a breakup with the game and you leave it for a long time, you are going to come back to it at stage one again and it's going to become a vicious cycle of losing and it will lead to a probably final breakup with the game. It is crucial that whenever you hit stage five of the boss battle, you quickly move into stage six. So for stage six, we need you to just sleep on it. We need you to take a break from the game, go have a nap, go to bed, go hang out with your friends, go eat at some dinner, go get some fries, treat yourself to some ice cream, get your mind off of the game. You need to distance yourself from the game, but just for a little bit, just enough to clear your mind, get some clarity, relax a little bit, let the nerves calm down, then you'll be ready to go at the game again. Sleeping on it doesn't necessarily mean sleeping on it overnight. For example, whenever I was fighting Godric the Grafter, I struggled, I think I lost to him for about an hour and a half. I took a break, I walked my dog, I hung out with my friends for about an hour, hopped back on, played for another hour and a half, and managed to beat him at the end. While you're distancing yourself from actually playing the game, you can do a little bit of research on the game. Now some people might tell you it's cheating, but you can go look up videos about how to beat some of these bosses. While someone might tell you that is cheating, you still have to learn how to time these moves. You have to learn how to dodge, how to attack. You have to actually be the one to play the game because no matter what you see on a YouTube video, you cannot absorb someone else's muscle memory, someone else's experience into yours. Personally, what I've found from looking up guides is usually I'm doing a lot of the things that the person online is doing, but there's that one little trick that I didn't notice or that I haven't been doing. As a complete noob, for example, in Elden Ring, whenever I was fighting the Tree Sentinel, I was doing all of the things on the video that I watched, except I didn't know because I was a noob that you had this special attack that you could use that dealt extra damage and used your FP. I slept on it, I went back the next day and I beat him in three attempts. When I was fighting Magrath the Fell Omen, I didn't realize that you could, I didn't notice there was a the little thing where you could summon in Sorcerer Rogier. I was doing all of the things that the person in the video was doing, I just didn't have that extra help, that extra damage. I summon in Sorcerer Rogier, attempt about three or four more times, and boom, I did it. Sometimes though, a video doesn't help you. Like whenever I fought Godric the Grafted, I just had to get good at it. I was doing everything in the video, I just had to train a little bit, to learn the moves and take a break. But yes, step number six is crucial. You need to take a step away from your game, calm down, regain your composure, and then get back at it sooner rather than later. All right, so you've had your test run with the boss. You've learned his first stage. You've been thrown into the other phases and met his final form. You've learned all of the moves of every one of his forms. You've lost, you've gotten worse, you rage quit, you watched some videos, you learned, you trained, you took a break from the game, and now you are back. You are here and you are ready to fight this guy again. You start to fight him, you get through the first form. You get through the second form. If there are multiple forms or you just get to the end of the second form, you are starting to get his health down low and now you have entered stage seven. Stage seven, it's very important does not last long. Stage seven may only last a few seconds, maybe a minute. It truly depends on the boss and how many flurries of attacks they're chaining together in a row. But stage seven is the point at where stage four did you wrong. You are at the very end of his health bar and you are feeling the adrenaline spike again. Your pulse is racing. You can feel your blood pressure increasing. But this time in stage seven, you have to maintain your composure. Keep it together, man. Calm down, keep dodging, don't give in to that desperation, just throw some flurry of attacks to get him down, because that way madness lies. If you give in to that temptation, if you lose your composure and just start trying to throw attacks, if you just start randomly rolling, you are going to find yourself spiraling all the way back to stage four, and then you'll have to go through a rage quit, and you'll have to go through a sleep on it stage again. In this very crucial moment, you need to keep it together. Calm down, do what you've been doing. Know when you need to roll, maintain your timing, make that battle go on just an extra minute, minute and a half longer. Wait for your time and then strike. If you've done this successfully, you will move into stage eight, which is absolute unparalleled elation. You have done it, you have conquered this massive boss, this great enemy has been felled by your hand. And in my opinion, in gaming there is no emotion like it. There is no feeling like that feeling when you take down this massive boss, this titan of a being. You are on top of the world, you feel great, and it's made all of these hours that you put into the game absolutely worth it. 
Congratulations, you have destroyed your foe. Here is your reward, go do it again. <laughs> And then you move on to the next boss and you start back at, at stage one and you go through this entire roller coaster of emotions again. But why do we keep doing it? Because each boss just gets a little bit harder and harder. And that high that you feel from stage eight is just more rewarding each time and it keeps you coming back for more. But anyways, for whatever boss that you fought, congratulations on stage eight. You made it. I hope this feels great. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it. Those are the eight stages that we go through anytime we battle a difficult boss. Once again, make sure hop down in the comments and let me know what was the toughest boss that you've had to fight lately in video games. If you've never fought a boss literally ever in your life, just throw your favorite emoji down there because your engagement really helps out the channel. While you're at it, make sure you stab that like button like it's that boss you're trying to kill. Smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notifications for any new videos. Go check me out over on Twitch and we will see you guys in a later video. Good luck with your boss hunting.